Today, we're going to be talking about the differences between the gastric sleeve and the gastric bypass and why I went with the gastric sleeve. So if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Megan and I had gastric sleeve surgery on December 8th, 2020. I was 270 pounds at my highest weight and now I'm 140 pounds, done losing weight and feeling very confident where I'm at. If you'd like some more information on my gastric sleeve journey, I do have additional videos on my channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go check those out. Gastric sleeve and gastric bypass are both very popular methods of bariatric or weight loss surgery. Both of these surgeries are permanent procedures that can help aid someone in their weight loss. The size of the stomach is reduced and the hunger hormone called ghrelin is also removed. And those two things together will definitely help someone lose weight. But if diet and lifestyle changes aren't made, then the surgery will not be effective long term. So just as a quick overview of each surgery, in the gastric sleeve, a portion of the stomach is removed, and that can be anywhere from 70 to 90% depending on your surgeon. Within the section of your stomach that's removed, there's an area that produces the hunger hormone called ghrelin, and that helps reduce the sensations of hunger. And coming from a gastric sleeve patient, the feeling of hunger never actually completely goes away, but it does reduce cravings and eating becomes something that you need to do rather than want to do. So with the combination of having less space in your stomach and no longer having that ghrelin hormone that's cueing your brain to tell you that you want to eat, you lose weight very quickly. The gastric bypass does all of that, plus a portion of the small intestine is removed, which leads to a reduction in nutrient absorption. And I know that sounds a little bit scary, but you still absorb the nutrients. It just reduces how much you absorb because the food spends less time in your digestive tract, which means there's less time for your body to absorb all of those calories. So statistically, it does lead to faster and more weight loss than the gastric sleeve. Obviously, both of the surgeries are going to lead to weight loss, but there is a difference in how much weight is lost. On average, gastric bypass patients will lose between 60 and 80% of their excess body weight in the first year. And on average, gastric sleeve patients will lose between 50 and 70% of their excess body weight in the first two years. Of course, that's all dependent on how well you stick to the diet and lifestyle changes. I had gastric sleeve and lost all of my excess body weight in the first year, but I was also very careful about my choices and I really stuck to the plan and what I was supposed to do and what I was supposed to eat. For super obese individuals who have a BMI of 45 or higher, a gastric bypass is usually recommended. And that's because on average, it does produce more weight loss and it also has dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome occurs in bypass patients after they've had a lot of sweets or carbohydrates. And that can cause a lot of sweating, nausea, and diarrhea. So there's definitely some negative reinforcement when it comes to eating those off-limit foods. But for some people, that is absolutely needed in order to be successful with their weight loss. Dumping syndrome really isn't something that happens with the gastric sleeve. You still have the smaller stomach, so you can definitely feel full very quickly. And if you eat too much or if you don't chew your food completely, it can still cause you to lose your lunch. It creates this feeling like food is stuck at the bottom of your esophagus, at the top of your stomach, and it just can't empty quick enough. And over time, you do kind of learn to adjust and you know when to stop, when to slow down. But in those early days, right after having surgery, as you're reintroducing food into your life, there will definitely be some times where you lose your lunch. But like I said, it's a learning process and it does get easier over time. Okay, so I'm bringing up procedural times, not so that you can plan your day around when you're having surgery, but because some people might have a harder time being under anesthesia for certain amounts of time over others. People who have high blood pressure or high cholesterol might actually be at higher risk being under anesthesia than someone without those ailments. So on average, gastric bypass takes about two hours and 44 minutes, so almost three hours. And gastric sleeve takes about one hour and 40 minutes, so almost two hours. I don't remember the exact time that I went in and came out of surgery, but it was right about that same amount of time. 
Obviously, the main benefit of both of these surgeries is going to be the weight loss, but the gastric bypass has been shown to be more effective in people who have more weight to lose than the gastric sleeve. In a gastric bypass, there's a smaller risk of having acid reflux after the operation. So if you have acid reflux before the surgery, that's definitely going to be something you'll want to look into. I did have occasional acid reflux before the surgery, but it was usually after something that I did to myself, like eating something super spicy or a lot of food right before bed. And since it was something that really only happened after it was something that I did personally, I decided just to make habit changes instead of having to worry about getting a different surgery. I did experience some heartburn and acid reflux for a little bit, but it wasn't anything super severe and I was just able to take something over the counter like Zantac and that was really all that I needed. I'm knocking on wood, but now that I'm over a year out, heartburn and acid reflux are extremely rare for me. Dumping syndrome is considered a benefit for the gastric bypass because it does physically prevent you from trying to consume carbohydrates and sweets. Not everyone gets dumping syndrome, but studies have shown that approximately 80% of bypass patients do get that dumping syndrome. But there are people who really need that restraint and reminder to stay away from those types of foods. For me, I felt like I was going into this surgery knowing everything like the back of my hand, and I felt like I could really control myself when it came to sugary foods or carbohydrates. So personally, dumping syndrome was a deterrent for me getting the bypass, and I am not promoting any one surgery over another. I definitely think that's something that you and your doctor need to sort out together and figure out what's best for you. I'm just sharing my personal stories and what I went through. So while dumping syndrome is a benefit of the gastric bypass, the absence of dumping syndrome is a benefit of the gastric sleeve. Then one other benefit of the gastric sleeve is that statistically you do lose weight more slowly and studies have shown that if you lose weight more slowly that you'll have less loose skin. I lost 130 pounds in one year and I still have loose skin. I do have a video on my channel that kind of shows the main areas that I have so you can kind of check those out and see if that's something that you'd want to look into. Any surgery that you have is going to have complications, whether it's bariatric surgery, open heart surgery, or just removing a little bump on your toe. But of course, every surgery does have different levels of complications during, before, and after surgery. With both surgeries, there is a chance for wound infections at the surgical sites, hemorrhage, deep vein thrombosis, and pulmonary embolism. I am no doctor, but I'm also pretty sure that those are things that can really happen with any surgery. So some things that are more specific to bariatric surgery are the chance for a gastric leak. And that's when your stomach leaks digestive fluids into your abdomen. And that can be fatal if it's not caught soon enough. And again, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to try to go into all the science or the anatomy behind all of that. But that is something that you'll want to discuss with your surgeon to make sure that everything is done correctly to prevent any gastric leaks from happening. Another thing with having either surgery is when someone goes through rapid weight loss, their risk for gallstones does increase. So there are a lot of people who do end up needing gallbladder removals after surgery. Now again, knocking on wood, but I'm a year out and I have not had any issues with gallbladder pain, gallstones, or gallbladder attacks. Then as I mentioned earlier, with gastric sleeve, there is the chance of having an increase of acid reflux, and it's more likely to happen if you had acid reflux before surgery. This was a lot of the information that I went through and weighed out the pros and cons of before having surgery. And trust me, there is a lot more information out there, so make sure that you keep going out and doing your research, and make sure that all of your questions are answered before having surgery. I'm still super happy that I went with the gastric sleeve over the gastric bypass. It worked really well for me. I lost 130 pounds. I really had no complications and the recovery went very smooth for me. So hopefully this video was pretty informative for you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and tap that like button and hit the big red subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And feel free to click on any of these videos so you can see more on my weight loss journey. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye everyone!